What's up? I'm the Mac with a new M1 chip. I'm also a MacBook with Intel inside. What's new? Oh, you know, I'm cool. And I last a long time. Hi. Oh. A lot of developers depend on Docker for the development activities and Docker is finally supported, at least a preview of it, on the new Apple M1. The preview is out, let's dig in, compare it to the Intel chip. That's what we're doing today. All right, folks, so you have to download the silicon preview of Docker. It's available easily, just Google for it. This is what it looks like when you actually run the DMG. It's got the preview icon with a nice little preview thing. What is that, Minecraft themed? Doom themed? I don't know where they got that logo. Here's what the regular one looks like. I do have Docker installed on my, on my Mac over here, but I don't have Docker on either of these laptops. So this is gonna be a good comparison of installation all the way through running an image and running a program. We're gonna do two things today. We're gonna go through the getting started guide. It's like a baseline, everybody knows it. It's like a hello world of Docker, right? And then we're gonna download a very simple node program as well. So let's do that. I'm gonna drag Docker to applications here and here. Let's go ahead and wait for that to finish. It's not a very small file. This one's 1 1.4 gigabytes. This one's 1 1.39 gigabytes. They've managed to shave off 0.01 of a gigabyte. Good job. I wonder if that has to do with Intel specific stuff. All right, so you can see that the copy process, I started this one over here on the M1 later than the MacBook Pro i9 and it's already done. It's done already and it's the same amount of copying that it had to do. And this just goes to show you what the new M1s are capable of as far as file I.O., something you've seen me talk about several times in the videos I've done in the recent weeks, is file I.O. is super fast on the new chips. All right, we're done. Let's go ahead and kick things off. So I'm gonna close these installers and I'm gonna go ahead and run Docker app here and Docker app here. Okay, both of them say that you downloaded this from the internet. Are you sure you wanna open it? Let's go ahead and do that. And they both give you this message that says Docker desktop needs privileged access. Of course it does. Let's go ahead and do that. And it needs the password. We got the icon up here at the top and it's off. So we've got Docker running. It's kicking things up. Docker desktop is starting up and it presents a very beautiful getting started guide. You know, I love the way Docker presents this. The uh, onboarding is really, really nice here. So you can skip the tutorial or you can follow along, which we're gonna do. Let's go ahead and click start on that. It even gives you nice commands you can type in, but being that I'm pretty lazy, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna click on this button, which is gonna execute the command for me in the terminal there. So you can see the command that it's gonna execute, which is really top-notch documentation. I'd say it teaches you how to do things as well as actually running it for you. So. Docker run. Now, when I tap this button, it's, what it's gonna do is download the image and it's gonna go ahead and build that. So this needs to be done simultaneously on both machines so we can see how long it takes. I'm gonna click on this button here at the same time. And they're off. Okay. This one's already finished. That one took a little bit of time to catch up. MacBook Pro wins on this one. Next step, I wanna remind everybody that the MacBook Pro here is a Core i9 with 64 gigs of RAM. This is just the M1 chip with 16 gigs of RAM, and it's the MacBook Air. Let's keep going. We're gonna change directory and build that image with this button. Huh. I don't know, but the MacBook Pro seems to be winning this one too. Let's see who actually finishes first. Come on, come on. This is what I really love to, about these tests is that you can see who actually is gonna win on long running processes like these. Okay, MacBook Pro finished, folks, and we're still waiting for the MacBook Air M1. Should be done anytime now. By the way, we're also working with the preview here, so keep that in mind as well. Is it done? It's not done yet, but it's not doing anything. It's kind of just sitting there. Should I press a button? Oh, there we go, it's doing something now. Okay, it's deleting extra node modules, and now it's done. I have a hard time believing that it took that long. 
So we're gonna find out when I actually download the node image and we'll run that separately as well. Okay, the next step is to actually run the container. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press this button. It's gonna issue this command, the run command, and it's gonna forward port 80 to the image. Let's go ahead and do that. And that should be up and running. So I'm gonna kick off Chrome on both of these machines and I'm gonna go to localhost port 80. Okay, there it is. Make sure this one is running. They're both running. Seems like we're good to go. So a little bit disappointing on the M1 with that download and build process, but let's keep going and I'm gonna do this one more time using a node image. What I wanna do for the node image is, let me just make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna switch to the code directory, make another directory called Docker, CD Docker, and let's create another one called node proj one and go in there. And I'm gonna open this up in my editor, VS Code. Let's do the same thing here. Visual Studio Code proper opens up pretty slowly on the M1. See my video about Visual Studio Code, the insiders build and how much faster it is. I'll link to that video down below. All right, Node Proj 1, let's drag that over to open it. And here we go. Okay, we have Node Proj 1. Now, the reason I created a project is so I can create a Docker file here. I'm gonna have some settings in there. Same thing over here. It's asking me if I want to run the install the extensions for Docker for VS Code. I don't want to do that just yet. We'll just run this from a command line. Here are the settings I want to have in here in the Docker file. I want to use Node version 14. I want to have the working directory be the current directory. I'm going to give a copy command for any kind of package JSON files that are in here and index to um, copy it to the local directory, the local path. And then the command itself that we wanna execute is gonna be node. And we wanna pass in the argument index.js, which is gonna be our file that we're gonna run. So let's go ahead and create a file called index.js here. And all this is gonna do is say console.log. Let's go ahead and give it a nice message saying, hello world. So this is going to print out at the console when we run our Docker container with the node image, an instance of the node image. And this is the project, is this single file with a single command. I'm gonna do the same thing on the M1 so I can mirror these exactly. All right, we got our Docker file and we got our program. Now we need an image. All right, so first we have to build a Docker image and then we're gonna run it. So I'm gonna go ahead and issue the Docker command docker build dash t we'll call it my node app all right now where is our docker desktop just so that i am aware of what's happening at all times there's the dashboard that's what i'm looking for and we're going to look under images as you can see right now we just have the tutorial and we don't have that my node app now if i issue the build command which i'm going to do here at the same time as well and I'm gonna hit enter at the same time. It's not gonna take that long, so it doesn't really that matter that much, but let's do it anyway. And there it goes. It's gonna be building that image. Right now the MacBook Pro is winning again. It's kinda of hard to tell with all these numbers running across the screen though, who's gonna win, but we will see who's gonna win at the end when one of these finishes. Come on, come on, come on. Let's see what happens here. Very nice visual presentation though. This is also taking, oh wow, look at that. The MacBook Air won this one by a couple of seconds. Pretty good. So now if we check the Docker dashboard, you'll see my node app is right there with that image. And we can kick things off here, but we're gonna do it through the command line. Let's clear this up. And I'm gonna clear this one as well. And I'm gonna issue the command docker run dash it dash dash rm dash dash name. We gotta give the running instance a name, which is gonna be my app. And then you gotta pass in the name of the image you wanna use, which in this case is my-node-app. Okay, I'm gonna set that up and do this one too. They're both set up, let's kick things off. By the way, this is not gonna take very long. But nonetheless, we still have a winner. The MacBook Pro clearly won that one. Huh, wow. Let's do it again, I wanna see this. So by the way, what's happening here is it's kicking off that node process, that node image. It's finding the index file and running 
executing that JavaScript that's inside there, which just prints to the console. Pretty simple. Wow. Clearly, you can see the MacBook Pro wins on this one. Again, beta software for the Silicon Max. Give it a, maybe a month or two. We'll see what happens then. So there you go, folks. That's Docker running on the new M1 processor compared to the Core i9 Intel processor. You saw the differences in the amount of time it takes to download an image, to build an image, and to execute an image. If you have any other questions you wanna see on the M1, let me know in the comments down below. And of course, as always, I'd appreciate a like if you did enjoy this video or if you found this entertaining or educational and do subscribe to the channel for more content like this is developer focused around the M1 and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.